It's overcast and a bit cold in Central Virginia, but that doesn't take away from the matchup in front of us today as two VISAA playoff contenders battle as Woodbury Forest host Paul the Six. I'm Jeremy Huber, joined by Monica Moore. And Monica, right now, when it comes down the stretch in lacrosse in Virginia, it's all about kind of that jockeying for a playoff position as the postseason tournament looms. Absolutely. Well, this is an important game for both of these two teams in terms of the fact that both are concerned about that postseason seeding. It's important because you get to play at home for games. It's important because of who you get matched up with. And it's also a good measuring stick for where these two teams are at this juncture of the season. Paul the Six dealing with a lot of injuries, trying to see how that's going to shake out. Meanwhile, Woodbury Forest coming off of a tough loss to Episcopal and trying to see how they're going to measure up today against Paul the Sixth. Couple close wins for Woodbury lately. Again, this is a kind of rising competition. Paul the sixth, number two in the VISAA rankings. Woodbury Forest, number eight. So, two very good lacrosse teams right now matching up on the field. Let's take a look at our keys to the game. We'll start with Paul the sixth. And already I've talked about it overcoming the injuries. Ryan Lamb dealing with an injury today, as well as Luke Brugel and others for Paul the sixth. So, they're going to need some of their young players to step up today and be able to compete at this level. Also, maximizing possessions. That's Winning face-offs, always a key in lacrosse, and also preventing unforced turnovers. You never want to turn the ball over, especially against a team as good as Woodbury Forest. And finally, focusing on the little things. Coaches preach these things all the time, but Paul Six has had a lot of close games this year, and those games come down to writing. They come down to clearing. They come down to that good, strong defense. And so those little things can be big difference makers, as Paul Six has learned this year. Let's go ahead and take a look at our players to watch for the Panthers. We'll start out with the standout, the Virginia-bound Ryan Lamb. Well, Ryan Lamb has had an exceptional season, particularly given the fact that he has been struggling with injuries. The numbers that he's put up despite those injuries have been so impressive. And the fact that he's been playing this year without his good friend Ryan O'Connor, who helps draw some of those defenders away from him. Instead, Ryan Lamb has been a huge focus of all the defenses this year. And so, again, what he's been able to do despite that defensive pressure, despite those injuries, really has been very impressive. Of course, also to watch for Paul the Six, we go back to the, the midfield and the defensive side of things, it's Troy Jehelka. Well, Jehelka, he's a four-year varsity player for Paul the Six. He is the heart and soul of this defense, and he can just do everything out on the field. He can take face-offs. He plays the wing on face-offs, and again, he gets that defense organized. He plays very smart, and one thing that Coach Waters told me is this kid never makes mistakes. He is always dead on in the decisions that he makes and such an inspiration for his teammates. Let's flip it over to the other side. We'll look at Woodbury Forest looking for the upset today. Their key is to this game. Well, first of all, controlling the midfield, always important, particularly when you're expecting close games. But that midfield battle is something we're going to be focusing on all day long and slowing the tempo. Paul the Six has a lot of offensive firepower. Woodbury Forest wants to slow things down, try to limit the number of possessions and the number of opportunities that Paul the Six gets to try to take shots on goal. And then finally, a big game from their goalkeeper, Wharton. He's going to see a lot of action today. Again, we've talked about Ryan Lamb for Paul the Six, but Paul the Six has so many offensive offensive options that Wharton is going to have to come up very big back in cage for Woodbury Forest to win. Let's go look at the players to watch for the Tigers and Sagai that we saw last time we were here do some big things. The uh, Richmond bound Patrick Shea. Well, Patrick Shea is just so impressive. He can shoot from everywhere. His shot's very precise. He is a goalie's worst nightmare because he is so talented. He is really someone who can light up the scoreboard and be a big impact player. Of course, he draws a lot of attention from the defense, so other players going to have to step up around him, but he really is the go-to guy for Woodbury Forest. Of course. Of course, last time we were here, the loss to Episcopal really kind of made his own one-man run to get them back in the game. He's a guy that can rip off goals and bunches. He may need to do that today against Paul the Six. The other guy to watch for Woodbury Forest, Monica mentioned him earlier in our keys, it's the goalkeeper, Talford Warden. Well, again, he is going to see a lot of action today in the goal. We saw him against Episcopal a short while ago. He's very impressive in goal. He can make a lot of these saves. He's going to be very tested. He's going to need to talk to his defense and really get a lot of support from his defense. He certainly doesn't want a lot of one-on-one -on -one shots from Paul the Six. But, again, he's going to have to step up and have a big game today, and he is very capable of making those big stops. Yeah, Wharton, a guy that can definitely raise his level of play. Of course, Monica doing a little double duty today as she was, went down and caught up with both coaches in this matchup. The first guy she caught up with, the head coach for Paul the Six, Bob Waters. 
Thanks, Jeremy. I'm standing here with Paul the Six head coach, Bob Waters. Coach, your team has had a lot of close wins this year, a lot of one goal wins. What do you think has been the reason that they've been able to win those big games? First of all, we would have preferred to have more than one goal wins, uh, but we are, we are, um, we're happy that we had the wins. I think it has to do with maturity. Last year, much younger team started three freshmen last year, uh, so an extra year of maturity. We started one senior last year. We do have a couple guys out, and uh, the guys have had to step up. And again, this year versus last year when we had some injuries, guys are stepping up, and I think we just have a little more poise as a team. So we're happy with that. And what do you think the keys are going to be today against Woodbury Forest? Woodbury is always a very well-coached team, very fundamentally sound. So when you play Woodbury, you can't make a lot of mistakes. They'll capitalize on it. We, you know, they'll have great sticks, transition. We got to stay out of the penalty box, and we have to play fundamental across. Best of luck today, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Coach Waters there, of course. Monica also able to catch up with the head coach for Woodbury Forest, Brian Hemming. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here with Woodbury Forest head coach Brian Hemming. Coach, Paul the Six known for a lot of offensive firepower. Defensively, what are you looking for your team to do today? Uh, one of the things defensively what we're looking to do today is um, force them into taking shots that our goalies have an easy time saving. And uh, we spent the last couple days, you know, really working on moving our feet, getting our hands on their hips, and, you know, pushing them out to the hash marks. You know, the nice thing about playing on a field that's lined for football as well, you got some great visual references. Um, so I think, you know, that's going to be part of it. And also, too, I think switching in and out of uh, defenses, going from man to zone, uh, possible shutoff here and there, just kind of keep them on their heels a little bit. Um, and, you know, I think um, – with the athleticism we got, and, the, and we've got some great goaltending with uh, with number four in there, Talford Wharton, you know, we should be able to give our offense a, a fair amount of opportunities today so that, to have them capitalize. And one thing people are very excited about, the face-off battle. Can you talk about what you expect from that? Uh, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, a heavyweight fight, you know, this is it. you got Wiley Mendocino, who is uh, – Arguably the best in the state. You've got their number 11. I, I don't know the young man's name, but uh, he's he's really good as well. Uh, arguably, you know, the best face-off guy in the state. And to have both those guys go at it on a Saturday afternoon, is, is it's going to be fun to watch, you know, to, to see what happens and, um, and see how both of them play. So we're looking forward to it. Best of luck this afternoon, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Take a look at the starting lineup for Paul the Sixth in this one. Lot of talent on the field right there, Monica. Well, absolutely. We've already talked about a lot of it, and a lot of players going to have to step up today. Another player definitely to keep your eyes on is the goalkeeper, Adam Baker. He is a guy that has so much heart. He plays 10 feet tall, really gets his defense going at and back in the goal, he is someone who certainly can stop a lot of big shots. And for Paul the Six, dealing with those injuries, and then, of course, the fact that last night was prom night for the Panthers, so, you know, probably going to be some exhausted people coming out to, to play here tonight. Lots of people going to have to have big games. Another one on that list is, is Roman Pugliese. Yeah, a lot of guys there to watch, and we'll watch that storyline and see how the Panthers come out early on in this game, whether the Tigers can get the jump. Speaking of the Tigers, their starting lineup in front of you, of course, a lot of guys there we saw uh, last time out. Graham Goldstein out there, should see him splitting some time. Taylor Brower, the concussion, he's back in the lineup today, but talk to Coach Hemming said it will ease him into that lineup. But again, a lot of guys to watch after some big games today. Absolutely, and Nick Bierman, one who was very impressive when we saw the game against Episcopal. He's someone who can score a lot of goals and get the offense going. He's going to have to work in tandem with Pat Shea to get this offense going and to get some good opportunities for the Tigers. Joma is ready for lacrosse here in Central Virginia as the Tigers and the Panthers will face off. And again, as we talked about, it's going to be a, a big one for these two teams as playoff positioning, those type of things as we move along seeing exactly how these cut teams kind of match up. And again, a way to test each other in this game should be a great opportunity for both sides. And so almost ready here. So we'll get ready to go. And again, the uh, two teams out at uh, the middle of the field. And again, Jeremy, I talked a little bit about it with Coach Hemming, as you saw before the game, but I think the face-off battle, one that everyone is really looking forward to today. Luke Bruegel, one of the best in the state last year. He was such a standout, but of course, he is one of those players that has been dealing with injury, and it is a shoulder injury. He got that during wrestling season, which is a tough injury for a face-off specialist to be contending with, and so he's really just getting back to form and getting to, to where he was last year. He's going to be uh, facing off against 
Wiley Mendocino, another person considered one of the best in the state at that face-off specialist position. And so whoever wins those possessions today is going to be a really big difference maker in this contest because, as we've talked about, Paul the Six, they have so much offensive firepower. If they get a run, a streak going of winning those face-offs, they can really put some points on the scoreboard. On the other hand, Woodbury Forest can really slow down this tempo and get – things going on their end of things if Mendocino can get hot in the face-off circle. Also saw their transition game last time, scored some transition goals. As Monica told you, Bruegel and Mendocino in the circle, and we are underway actually going to give this one over as Paul the Six will start. So unfortunate turn of events there for Woodbury Forest with the penalty on the face-off, giving possession to Paul the Sixth. And we'll give the Panthers the first opportunity here. But you see some sloppy play. Yeah, Panthers should have really had two turnovers, but Woodbury couldn't come up with either ground ball. Now Paul the Six will go on the attack. And again, we were wondering how Paul the Six would come out today dealing with injuries, so some changes in their lineup, of course, having prom last night. A lot of guys exhausted coming off of that. That's why the game was changed, was originally slated for yesterday at 430. And we'll go over top of the crease on the bounce. It'll stay with Paul the Six. As close as man to it, Kilbasa. Now a long-range shot by Pugliese trying to test the goalkeeper early on. Seeing Woodbury looking to double anytime when guys go into a shooting motion. Well, absolutely, and, and a, a, a good d defensive strategy there for Woodbury Forest. We've talked about all the offensive options that Paul the Six has, so having those slides come quickly, disrupting the shooters, gives a lot of coverage to the goalkeeper. And speaking of the goalkeeper, a wharf, uh, Talford Wharton making a nice save there on a long shot, but a hard one. You see some of these Paul the Six guys can really whip it. There was a lot of power, as you said, on that shot. It was a high shot. The goalkeeper read it very easily, had his stick in great position, an easy save there for Wharton. Back out top. Stone had it for a second. Now Patrick Shea, he's the dangerous one for this Woodbury Forest team, again, really kind of got them back into the game single-handedly against the Episcopal. Also scored a few late goals in their last game, a closer-than-anticipated matchup against John Paul the Great. Well, Shea has such great speed, such great stick work. You have to keep track of him at all times, and you see he's being defended up top there by number 22, Troy Jahelko. We've talked about him as one of our players to watch. Looking for the dodge there, Beerman again. He had a good game last time out. Had four goals in that Episcopal matchup. Or one of their games they've seen lately against the top team. Shea looking for a dodge. Nothing there. He'll bring it back out, and they'll restart the offense. And every time Shea getting the ball, again, Jahelka right there with that long stick, trying to cut him off, not give him any good angles or lanes towards the goal. Play by Whitworth to keep it in. And again, the Tigers... Taking a lot of time. We talked about tempo would be key. They are making sure they're going to get their best shot before they give this ball up. Well, a very smart strategy. That shot, he was just, his angle just off. They'll keep it with Woodbury. See, I thought they were going to keep it with Woodbury. They will go ahead and will keep it with Woodbury. I thought they were going to give it over to Paul the Six, but the referee says no. Nice pass in front, and the shot attempt goes by. I think a nice play by the defenseman on Bierman, and the Panthers will get possession. Nice job by Paul the Six backing that up. And the Panthers will go ahead and take their time. Of course, these two teams, a lot of common opponents this season, will play some that the guys have not played yet, though the... Uh, Nice win for Paul the Sixth a couple weeks back against St. Anne's Belfield. Uh, traditional power of one last three state championships in the VISAA. And that one uh, won by Michael McCormick with a overtime goal. Actually had a lot of overtime <laughs> games for this pretty good Paul the Sixth team. Well, absolutely. That, is, that has been something that has certainly been, as I, as I talked about before the game with Coach Waters, that has been uh, a defining point of their season. They've had those close wins, and as, as you heard him say, he, he wishes that they, they had been able to win those games by more, but you're always happy when you're able to pull out those those close wins, but of course they've been on the other end of it too, that game against Georgetown Prep. A lot of people thought they should have won it. They lost on that last second goal. Wide shot there. We'll stay with Paul the Six as letting one go was Grimes. Grimes headed off to uh, VMI, or at least committed to VMI. 
And Paul and the Six, you're seeing they're not afraid to take these long-range shots, which, of course, you sacrifice a bit of accuracy on the long-range shots, but they are a very talented offensive team. And Lamb with it. Of course, we've got the eye on him. Was all-state player last year, all WCAC in the Washington, D.C. area, one of the top lacrosse conferences, and headed off to the University of Virginia, of course, dealing with that abdominal injury. Well, and he's someone who has just dealt with injury and adversity his whole career. Another great save by Wharton there on the close shot by Williamson. And then a low shot there. You saw Wharton go to the ground, keep his stick down low to make the save. As we said, Monica, it's going to be incumbent on him. If he gets a chance to see it, it's going to be big if he can save it today. Well, that's exactly right. And again, his defense really wants to prevent as many one-on-one -on -one opportunities that Paul Six is going to have with the goalkeeper. As much as they can protect him, that's going to be key. Ingram with that short angle attempt there, almost to stuff, but a good play by Baker to go ahead and hug that post. And so far, the storyline, the, the play of the goalkeepers, and both of them coming up with some, some good, good, good saves or, or good plays to help keep this one scoreless so far. Yeah, past the seven-minute mark, just under here in the first. And no score yet. No one able to find the back of the net. Again, another wide shot attempt. And Williamson will be the closest, so Paul the Six will keep it. And again, we're, we're not seeing a lot of close-range shots here. Paul the Six content to take more mid-range shots. I think that's got to fall into Woodbury Forest's advantage as they've been able to really, as you said, just kind of keep them out of the close range. No one's really gotten in close to the, to the goal to really kind of shake up the Woodbury defense. Well, absolutely. I think right now Coach Hemming has to be really happy with the shots that his team is giving up. These are the shots that you want to give up and certainly limiting what Paul the Six can do so far. That one's close, point blank, going to be saved by Wharton. He's going to pick the rebound up as well. Kind of a tasty one around the net. Smith with a close range shot, but weren't able to survive it again. And that was actually the look that Paul the Six wanted. That was just a phenomenal save by Wharton. I think he got a lot of confidence out of those first few saves that he got and able to come up with a huge one because that was a great look for Smith. Here comes Pat Shea and just kind of doinks it in front of the net. Was looking for that low shot and just a little bit off on his execution. Shea trying to take advantage of an unsettled situation. The defense not really set, so he rushed that shot a little bit. But Woodbury Forest still with possession. And, of course, I think for Shea, he's so used to the defense closing in on him. He knows Jehelka has been with him so far all afternoon, so he saw that opening, and he was going to take that shot. Good ball movement by Woodbury. We'll kick it back out. Bozinski, the freshman, really doing some good things late in the season for Coach Hemming's team. Really was complimentary of the way he's kind of come on late and had some goals and made some big plays for this team. And so important for these freshmen to be able to step up at this juncture of the season and contribute, get a little play in time. Both of these teams going to lose some very important seniors from their rosters, so these younger players are going to be called upon a lot next year. Redmond's going to pick up the ground ball in transition and maybe a chance here as Paul the Six will miss on the shot. Has a good job by Warford to get out on the shooter and kind of make it uncomfortable and just threw it over the side of the net. A good opportunity there for Lane Grimes, and that's exactly what Paul the Six wanted was something in transition, an unsettled situation, just not able to convert there. Yeah, really off that hopping ground ball, a little bit of a misplay by Lindell Stone. Couldn't pick it up, and a great job by Redmond to get it on the run and get all the momentum going the other way. But again, the Panthers unable to convert. When we talked about it, it's actually one of our keys to the game for Paul the Six, but turnovers are such a big factor in these games. You want to prevent those costly errors because that one could have been a, a tough pill to swallow for Woodbury Forest, but they, they got lucky that Paul the Six not able to convert off the, the break. Again, Paul the Six will slow it down here after really getting nothing going. Lamb going to direct traffic as he starts up at the point. And Lamb, again, such a great story. As I said earlier, he's really someone who has dealt with injuries his entire career and, in fact, We've been talking about what a sensational year he had last year. What a lot of people don't know is due to a football injury, he had to have a steel rod put in his arm, and he was playing with that all last year. He couldn't play football this year because of that rod. It's still in his arm. 
And Lamb will miss on the shot, but again, it'll go back to the back, uh, back wall. And in fact, he can't have it taken out until his playing career is over because mm. it's over a year to rehab it once you have the rod taken out. But so he is someone who has dealt with so much adversity, but you see the numbers that he's put up, what he's been able to do, just such an impressive young man. And one of the words that kept coming up when I was talking to Bob Waters about him was maturity, athletic maturity, mental maturity. He is just the complete player for Paul VI. Oh, pressure there by Cannell, making it uncomfortable. And again, well, that bit of a trap and giving nothing there, but that will find the back of the net as a nice shot coming from Ro Roman Pugliese. He's headed to Maryland, and he puts his team up 1-0 early on. Well, and Pugliese was one of the players that Bob Waters told me has to step up today and have a big game with all the injuries they're dealing with and people who are not at full strength. He is someone who has been coming on only a sophomore, and he's one of the guys they're going to be depending on these next few years to really step up in the wake of the graduation of players like Lamb and Ryan O'Connor. To 241 to go here in the first quarter. Pugliese's goal breaks the ice. Panthers up 1-0 on the Tigers. Hello, and thank you for viewing this portion of our most recent broadcast. This concludes the free viewing experience for this broadcast. Now, if you're interested in viewing the remainder of this broadcast, well, you can simply click the Add to Cart button located directly below this video where it says Download a Copy. You can also purchase a DVD copy of this broadcast. That DVD will be viewable on both computers and televisions. Now, for those of you that don't know, DMVStream.com is an independently funded project, meaning that your purchases and pledge of support go a long way in helping us to continue to broadcast live sporting events in the DMV. Thanks for stopping by and for your continued support.